Welcome to Topper Talk, your number one Western Kentucky Athletics podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Moffitt, and I'm joined by co-host Tyler Bailey. Hilltopper Nation, whether it's happening on the hill or on the road, grab those red towels, stand up and cheer, because it's up next on Topper Talk. Welcome back to another episode of Topper Talk. Um, This episode, we're talking about offensive linemen. We're um, going to jump right in. This group is uh, coached by the uh, coach, Zach Langford. They are the number two ranked unit in Conference USA. As always, we're going to lean on the Phil Steel magazine. Um, this group is led by the Phil Steel Conference USA first teamer, Quantavius Leslie, six foot three, 310 pound junior. Also, on the second team, Vincent Murphy, six foot two, three hundred five pound junior, and Mark Good, a six foot six, three hundred pound junior. I'm gonna tag in Tyler right now, man. How about the offensive line, man? We're uh, we're gonna talk about this whole team, but um, just talk about the guys we have returning right now. Man, the guys we got returning, you know, I'm excited about them. We got some big boys. You know, Quantavius Leslie, 6'3", 310, and uh, Murphy, 305, 6'2", and Mark Good, 6'6", 300 pounds. Them boys going to be hard to move around. And, uh, of course, we got some other players to talk about coming up. But uh, as returning, I mean, I think they 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 have, like, what, 56 games uh, or career starts between them. Uh, I'm excited about that, boy. Yeah, this is one of our higher-rated uh, units, just being the number two team uh, as far as offensive line goes in Conference USA. So one of our highest-rated units, and this, that's with turnover. I mean, there's uh, a lot of turnover in this group, uh, even in the last couple of years. Um, I know last year we saw uh, Cole Spencer and Mason Brooks leave uh, to the transfer portal. And this year has kind of been no different. Um, we're going to talk about the players, first of all, that we lost um, going into this year. Then, first of all, we started offensive tackle Gunnar Britton, who transferred to Auburn. And then we also lost our center, our starting offensive center, that's Rusty Stats, who went to Texas Tech. We also lost David Ndukwe, who transferred to Houston and Luke Slusher, who transferred to Eastern Tennessee. So, you know, we have have lost a lot of experience in this group. But, um, you know, once we get into, you know, who is returning from this group and who we've added to this group, it's not hard to see kind of why we're the number two unit in the league. Um, and really, in my opinion, have a lot of... Um, I guess, upside to the potential of this group. So talk about who we added to this group. First off, let's talk about number um, or Mason Williams, a six foot two, 298 pound junior from Murfreesboro. He's a graduate transfer from Harvard with two years of eligibility left. We also added Michael moment, a six foot three, 300 pound sophomore from Alcorn state and Daryl Johnson, the six foot seven, three hundred seventeen pound junior, who is a uh, Dodge City uh, Junior College transfer, and then Levy Johnson, a six foot three, three hundred pound freshman from the high school ranks. So, Tyler, just jump in real quick. Um, you know, we've talked about the guys we've lost, and now several, several big guys that we've added here. What, you know, what do you think about the guys we've added to kind of supplement the guys we've lost here? Well, I'm going to uh, first say Mason Williams. Uh, you, uh, he's from Murfreesboro, Tennessee, went up to Harvard. So, obviously, he is a, an educated man. Um, he was smart enough to decide not to go to MTSU, uh, went up to Harvard. And he is, what, first, in 2022, he was a first-team All-Ivy League uh, and then transferred down here, which I think is probably his greatest move yet. Uh, Michael Moment. 6'3", 300-pound sophomore. Shit, that boy. 
I'm excited to watch him play. Uh, and then Darnell Johnson, 6'7", 317. Boy, is cornbread fed from the stock. I mean, it's just plug him in any hole, and uh, he'll stop definitely the defensive line or a linebacker trying to shoot the, trying to shoot the gap. Uh, I'm excited about these guys. Levy Johnson, 6'3", 300 pounds. Freshman straight out of high school? Shit. No, I'm, I'm excited about the, the people that we've added, man. I mean, they are definitely going to add and not take away. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there, there's a lot of of uh, size, you know, especially, you know, Division One size. And funny story, just kind of uh, turning back the clock a couple weeks here. Uh, obviously, me and my family are located here in Bowling Green. A couple weeks ago, we went out to dinner at El Maz here locally in Bowling Green. We go into the restaurant. We, we are... Me and walked into our table. We're gonna sit, and uh, we're passing this long table full of a bunch of tables pulled together. And I look over, and I see I see QB ones chilling there. Austin Reed. I was like, Oh, Austin Reed's chilling here. And now, as I get to survey and who's around him, I was like, Oh, this is the entire offensive offensive line with Austin Reed, and uh, just a bunch of huge dudes. And this, these are the guys we're talking about today. Obviously, I don't know all their names and faces. As they're sitting there, but the funny story is, um, you know, I, I make eye contact with Austin Reed. He knows who I am. I know who he is. We like we saw each other. We ended up talking before he left. But when their group got up to leave, and they were done with their dinner and we're leaving, they all get up to leave. And my my middle child, my nine year old, goes, "Daddy, <laughs> why are all these people so big and so tall?" And I was like. I was like, well, baby, that's that's division one size right there. I was like, daddy's only five foot ten. All those guys are six one, six two, six three plus three hundred pounds plus um just being impressive athletes. So that's kind of my funny story is that um, you know, all these guys are noticeably very, 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 very big guys. And um, you know, even my nine, ten year old kind of observed it um, when we saw him out in the wild, per se, a couple weeks ago. Let's um, talk about the projected starters. I know we talked about this during the spring game episode. We saw, you know, kind of who was being started from left to right. Um, We've kind of got a better feel of that now. Um, As we go through, you know, getting through summer, now we're, like, Officially now, as you know, as today is August first, we're past midnight. We're um, we're getting into fall ball. Um, we have some feel of what the projected starters will be from you know left to right on the offensive line. We're gonna name those off uh, from the from the feel still projection, but we feel pretty good about what those may or may not be. Uh, projected starters: at left tackle Mark Good. Um, left guard, Quantavius Leslie. Uh, center will be Vincent Murphy. Right guard will be Wesley Horton, Horton a six foot four, two hundred ninety five pound sophomore. The right tackle will be Russ Dorsey, six foot seven, three hundred five pound junior. Um, so again, a lot of size there, um, a lot of experience um, in the unit that. You know, we've already talked about lost a couple guys to transfer um, just as last year um, in Rusty Stats and Gunnar Britton and even the year before in Mason Brooklyn, Cole Spencer. So in the last two years, you know, we've lost, you know, call it four starters who could be on this line right now. But we still have four guys um, or call it five guys right now with a lot of um, playing time experience and game experience and you know the number two unit in the conference is I mean it's not I, I would not take that as a slight at all especially given the um, I mean there's not one senior on this offensive line that we've talked about yet we haven't talked about a senior yet we're not going to talk about a senior yet um, so I really think that really paints a strong picture to just what we have as an overall roster. 
And then we'll also get into the rest of the names on the roster. We have Wyatt Anderson, who is a six foot three, three hundred six pound redshirt freshman. We have Hayden Todd, who is a six foot three, two hundred ninety five pound redshirt redshirt freshman. Evan Wimberly, six foot five, two hundred ninety pound redshirt freshman. Colt Jackson, six foot three, two hundred ninety pound sophomore. Colton Cable, a six foot four, two hundred ninety seven pound junior. Michael Andalacy, a six foot eight, three hundred ten pound sophomore, and Marshall Jackson, a six foot six, two hundred ninety pound sophomore. So, um, we you know we've talked about a lot of depth um, names we've added and subtracted from the roster, projected starters, um, the depth chart. You know, just kind of guys behind the the projected starters. So. Tyler, I'm going to have you jump in real quick and just talk about, you know, the guys um, on the roster that we have, you know, not necessarily the starters, but just the overall strength of this unit. Kind of what do you think about the offensive line? Oh, I think the offensive line is in good hands. I mean, that's one thing that I guess you could say about Western over, I guess, the past few years is, yes, we lose some good players, but we always have that continuity of good play other good players stepping up and filling them holes when they need to i mean yes we we lost gunner britton and rusty stats but i mean vincent murphy wesley horton uh wes dorsey and mark good and you know quantavius leslie they three of them have played together what last year and uh it you know they all know each other they know what each other's good at and these other players, you know, they're, they've been sitting there in the wings waiting, and now they finally get to step in and fill their roles or plays back up. I mean, I, I think we've got good players, and I, I'm expecting this line to, to continue to be good. Yeah, I'd agree. I mean, we're, we're definitely a school that thrives off of – um the additions of the transfer portal i mean we've we've talked about that many times that you know we're not gonna knock players that decide to leave due to the transfer portal because we you know rely so heavily on it from players that we add so the flip side of that coin is that players are gonna leave um we're gonna lose players occasionally to the the transfer portal we've seen that the last couple years especially on the offensive line we've lost a lot of um game talent a lot of guys that have started games and played games and um been just valuable guys that you know if they were still here obviously we'd be thrilled um but you know that hasn't happened and um you know we've adapted and the depth has been there and you just kind of have to uh, adapt on the fly just like we've like we've said we um we we lose from the portal we also gain from the portal um whether it be skill position players you know quarterbacks obviously wide receivers especially um but we also gain players from the offensive line position um and just all over the roster so we're gonna you know fill and plug holes as needed um, on the transfer portal uh, all along the roster. So let's just, uh, let's jump into the questions that we have for every unit. Tyler, what would you consider to be the strength of the offensive line unit? Well, unlike the, uh, well, you know, we got uh, the strength is we got some experience back from, uh, from last year that only gave up 14 sacks. Uh, which was 10th best in all of college football and second best in Conference USA. So that's my strength. Yeah, I'd agree. Um, even though, you know, we lost, you know, two major cogs of the puzzle, you know, two of five when you lose Rusty Stats going to Texas Tech and Gunnar Britton going to Auburn, uh, you know, obviously in the trade for, Xavion Capers, um, that was the player to be named but in that trade. But when you lose two of your five are going, you know, to call them, you know, P5 schools, whatever you want to call it, but you still return, you know, 
you know, four or five guys that have plenty of game experience. I mean, in my opinion, that's a strength. Um, you never want to leave so heavily on your starting five that if anything comes up, injury or just being tired or just substitutions, etc., that those five are exhausted and have to be rotated for someone else that you're putting someone in that has no experience, etc. cetera. Um, we have that, you know, kind of in our favor that our starting five, even though it's not a returning starting five, it's, you know, three of five are returning um, due to transfer situations, but we still have plenty of experience because, we have a rotation that has allowed people, whether it be through injury, et cetera, they've gotten game time experience and have played. And, you know, it's different practicing uh, versus a pass rest versus when the lights come on, you're playing against a real live game situation pass rest. So it's, um, in my in my opinion, especially with no seniors on this roster, um, you know, talking about the starting lineup, talking about the the depth of the team, the the strength of the unit is that this is an experienced unit that hasn't played. And I know that sounds weird, but we have a really strong offensive line, which this offense is kind of predicated on. And, you know, we talked about the quarterback position. But everything that this offense is going to become or is, is dependent upon this group of five guys now that we have named projected starters um, and their ability to keep Austin Reed or whomever it may be clean and in the pocket and able to make reads and decisions um, to get whoever that, that the wide receiver running back, whoever tight end open. So my strength is that, you know, this group, however, they they might not have a lot of continuity, but there's still a lot of game experience between the players and people that are returning who may not have transferred. So that that's my strength of the unit. Tyler, what would you consider the weakness of the offensive, offensive line unit? Well, I mean, other than losing two very experienced players and three, if you want to count David uh, Naduque, I don't really see much of a weakness here. I mean, this is probably, other than quarterbacks and wide receivers, this is probably one of our most experienced positions that we have. Um, I mean, I just don't see a weakness. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go with you and it's, it's hard to argue against that. I mean, we're the number two projected unit in conference USA. I I want to say we are behind UTEP, um, just off of memory, but, um, like we were saying, I mean, there there's a couple guys that we lost. We obviously lost Rusty Stats to Texas Tech, um, going to play for, you know, Kit Lee um, over there at Texas Tech and the offensive of line coach Hambly that he has experience with and, and played with before. And then Gunnar Britton went to Auburn. Um, you know, can't can't fault those guys. Uh, you know, we, we have been on air and stated many times that we are a school that thrives off of transfer portal in guys, you know, over the last four or five years, we can, you know, make a highlight just real of guys that we have brought in, Jared Stern, Bailey Zappi, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that we have just shined and just shine light on uh, from the transfer portal. So occasionally we're going to lose guys um, to the transfer portal. You know, it, it gives and takes us away. So, when we lose those guys, Gunnar Britton, Rusty Stats, you hate to see it. So, the, you know, in my opinion, the weakness of the unit is that the five guys that we're going to roll out against USF uh, and then Houston Christian, um, Ohio State, is going to be a group of five guys that haven't necessarily 
played together yet. You know, they have they may have played together in spot, you know, mock up duty, but you know, on a full time basis, the the weakness is they haven't done it in a full time capacity. You know, that that that's my only weakness. I don't think it's gonna be a weakness. I think we're gonna have a really good offensive line unit um that keeps Austin Reed clean that presents, you know, running opportunities and and screen and whatever passing opportunities we need. But the weakness is that, you know, the returning experience um, just on paper isn't there as far as a unit that, you know, if we hadn't lost two starters, you know, we'd have we'd have a lot of starting experience back. So that that's my weakness to the unit, even though I wouldn't necessarily label it as a concern going into the season you know now you know just a little or a month out so Tyler um who are you most excited to see on the offensive line unit well I'm gonna say uh Tick Leslie uh Quantavius Leslie uh after being tabbed second team all conference USA last year and first team in 2021 and also as a 2022 Conference USA honorable mention and being on the 2022 Outland Trophy watch list. Uh, I mean, this dude right here, I am most excited to see him. Um, let's see, what, what what's his six, what, six, three, 310, I believe, 318. I mean, that, that I'm, I'm most ready to, to watch him hold that line this fall. Yeah, six three 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 ten. He he's a big boy in his own right. Um, my most excited to see. I, I'm torn. I'm I'm really torn, especially because there's so many new faces on the um, the offensive line. I I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Mark Good, um, left tackle, projected starter right now. That's kind of the. Uh, the quarterback's blind side, if you would call him, you want to call the blind side player, uh, coming off of a, an injury last year, the Dollar General Larry Bird. You know, I think he's got big shoes to fill over there and um, just keeping the quarterback clean and uh, allowing plays to progress. And, you know, whatever that, if it's a, a quick three step drop and pass or if it's a, a tunnel screen or, pass over middle or just a long five step drop. I mean it it all starts with this offensive line and you know that blind side position that he's projected to be started in is going to kind of be one of the most important positions, especially coming off an injury. Um, you know, that's tough just in its own right, rehabbing, getting back, getting with your guys and, and being in playing shape. So and now we're leaning on him talking about starter minutes. Um, so um, I'm most excited to see him kind of in that full time starter capacity. And obviously, you know, just for the, you know, the, the full, I don't know how to say it, but the full capacity of this offense, just, you know, we have to have an offensive line that is, living up to you know just the basic standards of of what this offense needs so um who would you say is the hardest to replace uh tyler on this offensive line from last year going into this year well i had to think about it I, you know it's basically a coin flip but i went with gunner britain you know he was six six 305 pounds you, you can't teach size and he did you know, he gave Reed all the time he needed uh, in the pocket, or or to give the white or the the halfback enough time to 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 break and cut. You know, to to get upfield. So that's why I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with Gunner Britton. Yeah, I kind of was in the same position. I mean, I, I had a coin flip situation with uh, Britton and Stats. I mean, I was friends with. Um, both of their parents, you know, saw them at many, many, many away games. They, they were constant figures at every, literally every away game that we had. So I know that going forward, uh, the Texas Tech and Auburn fans, we could guarantee that they're going to see some stats 
and some Britain jerseys um, in their section of fans. But I went with um, – I'm going to go with Rusty Stats. I mean, you're starting center, a guy that had been there for multiple years. Uh, he took over for, for Seth Jost, who is a multiple-year starter at center. Um, that You know, that's a tough position. That's literally the only position on the field that touches the ball – more than the quarterback, you know, he touches the ball every single play. Um, and that center position just is tough. And to have a multiple year starter in um, Rusty Stats leaving, and now you're you're handed over to Vincent Murphy, which obviously you hope, you know, that's the guy you just plug and play to the the center position, and you hope it's it's going to be seamless and no problem. But it's one of those positions that um, you know you don't think you have a problem until. You get in this game situation, and you've got some, you know, some snaps that aren't clean, etc. So, obviously, we don't hope that's a problem. We don't think it'll be a problem. We, we, you know, we're sure they've been working on that through spring ball and coming into fall ball, etc. Um, but until you know live game action snaps, you know, get here and are are a reality in our face, you know, we don't we don't know what we have. Um, I, I have full confidence and faith in our offensive line staff, coaching staff, et cetera, to make that not be a worry. But, um, you know, having a multiple-year starter at center and then replacing him with an, a new body, essentially, um, and Vincent Murphy, I mean, that's – to me, that's my number one concern. You have to have a, an offense that predicated on a, uh, you know, a clean exchange between center and quarterback and then clean protection with the offensive line. So – um, that's my hardest to play. Who, uh, Tyler, who's going to be your breakout player for this season, uh, on the offensive line? Oh, right, well, my breakout player is going to be Michael Andelacy. Boy is 6'8, 310 pounds. He's playing right tackle behind West Dorsey. If you ask me, this kid's like Billy Bob from Varsity Blues. This kid has his own area code. I mean. That's a that's that's a big boy to try to push around and move around, and I don't think many people are gonna be able to do it. Uh, you know, uh, ZC, yeah, that that's my breakout player. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go with um, Wes Dorsey himself. Uh, kind of got spot duty last year. Um, you know, you're going with his backup. I'm not mad at that because I think at the end of the day, I think the depth of this offensive line and the versatility of being able to move and move and plug and play guys as needed is going to be a strength. Um, but I think West Dorsey at six foot seven, 305 pounds um, is going to be a solid, solid breakout player. Again, Michael under six foot eight, 310 pounds. I mean, that is a gigantic man, human being, to have um, as needed, basically, when the offensive line needs rotation, uh, a breather, rest, you know, health injuries, whatever you want to call it, you're calling in this huge guy to uh, provide relief for the offensive line and Aus- often, uh, Austin Reed to be able to get a clean playoff and throw the ball down the field, presumably. So, not a bad decision. I mean, West Dorsey, Michael Andalasi. I mean, both of those are solid, solid uh, players, especially just given their size and potential impact. So, Tyler, who is going to be your MVP on the offensive line unit? Mine is going to be, and you named him a few minutes ago, uh, mine's going to be Vincent Murphy. You know, he came here from South Carolina and started off 14 games last season. So he is a veteran, and he does have a lot of experience. And you're right. I mean, he he is the only other player who touches a ball every single play. So that's my MVP. I believe he's going to do a lot of clean uh, clean snaps to read. Um, I remember a few years ago, I believe we was playing down MTSU. It was a bad hike. Ball went like 50 yards backwards. Got kicked around a few times. Um but I don't think that's going to happen this year. So Vincent Murphy locking in is my MVP. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go the same. I'm going to go with Vincent Murphy. He's going to be my MVP because 
kind of the same reason you said. I mean, it's the guy that touches the ball every single play, and it's not somebody that you focus on unless those exchanges aren't clean. Um, and now, now we have been lucky and blessed in the last few years of Seth Jost and Rusty Stats and now Vincent Murphy that we've had a, a lot of experienced center to quarterback uh, exchanges as, as far as getting the ball to the quarterback and be able to, to let a play develop. But I do project that um, Vincent Murphy will kind of continue that trend of it just having a reliable center there that can kind of be the quarterback of the offense, you know, per se before, you know, Austin Reed has the ball in his hands. I mean, you kind of have to see, you know, the lineup and what's going on and and call plays, especially if needed um, and kind of see the blocking scheme needed um, and have a clean, a clean handoff. I mean, that's at the end of the day, you just have to get the ball to, the quarterback's hands, especially in our offensive system that we're going to put up 30, 40 points a game. Like you have to have a clean handoff to the quarterback, to Austin Reed. Um, and they just initiate that offense. So I just, I, I'm also on board. I think Vincent Murphy, um, especially with his returning experience, um, even if we're kind of, Moving him along the line, um, it's not going to be a position that he's familiar with uh, as a center, you know, from a starting perspective. Obviously, he's done it now leading up from the end of last season um, and coming into this season. He's obviously been in that position and is more than familiar and, and ready to perform that role. But, you know, I, I think that um, – he's going to fill in that position admirably and, and just, you know, be a steady calming, um, just force to that position. And, you know, you really don't talk about the center position unless there is just bad snaps after bad snaps after bad snaps. So that's what we want to try to keep away from is, you know, having not clean snaps and just, um, you know, sloppy play there. You know, that's that's what we're trying to stay away from. And I think having a, an experienced offensive lineman that has been uh, through the positions of the interior offensive line, I mean, I think we're in good hands there. So um, who's going to be your MVP, Tyler, to the offensive line unit? Oh, I thought we just did that. Vincent Murphy's going to be mine. My bad. Who's gonna be your? Who, who's go, what's gonna be your your bold prediction for okay. your offensive line? All right. So last year our O line allowed fourteen sacks, and in two thousand twenty one we only had seventeen sacks. So I'm gonna say they're going to continue that trend of downwards, and I'm gonna say or that downwards trend, and saying that the O line will allow only a max of nine sacks this season i like that nine sacks uh and in at least 12 guaranteed games so you know less than one per game i i can i can dig that um i'm kind of in that same boat as i think um it's it's hard to gauge a, a, a true big prediction for the offensive line because they're most of their stats just kind of go unheralded whether it's what they're allowing run blocking pass blocking uh sacks etc so i i would agree i i think austin reed is not going to get sacked a lot i think he's going to have a clean pocket and be able be able to let plays develop and i mean we we fully expect Austin to lead the nation in passing again, like he did last year. Um, but also like we're going to have a really effective run game um, with who we have in the running back group. So I think that we are going to be near the conference lead in both, um, you know, 
a, a, an amount of sacks allowed. I, th I don't think we're going to have a, a high number of sacks allowed. And I think we're also going to be near the lead in um, rushing average allowed. Now, that, that may not mean that we lead Conference USA in rushing because I don't think that our offense is going to be um, predicated on, you know, handing the ball off 20, 30 times a game. You know, if we hand the ball off 10, 15, 20 times a game, um, you know, that's going to be – kind of a game changer and, and change of pace to what we're doing as far as opening up the field as on the passing plays. So when we do run the ball, I think we're going to be very effective at it because of the leadership of, you know, not only Drew Hollingshead, but Austin Reed and the wide receivers and offensive line that we have that are going to be blocking for, um, you know, kind of, uh, I don't want to say unexpected, but, you know, in an air raid philosophy, you know, you're expected to pass the ball more you are run. So I think we're going to um, kind of expand that opportunity of um, being able to run the ball when, you know, the pass is expected. So that's, you know, that's my bold prediction. It's not centered on anything exactly other than, um you know, sack flaws, we're not going to give a lot of those sacks up. And, you know, rushing yards per game, you know, our guys, whoever is RB1, 2, 3, you know, Step, Sanders, whoever, you know, Poindexter, are going to be guys that are going to be getting, you know, big um, averages of plays every time they touch the ball. Um, that's kind of my theory on this offense. I, I think – we've really been trending in the right direction as far as running backs and just really total offensive output. And um, no reason to think that'll pause this year, regardless of, of turnover or new faces, et cetera. So Tyler, um, yeah, we've talked a lot about here, uh, the offensive line and just what to expect and um, you know, who are the familiar faces and people coming back and um I guess just, uh, you know, we, we really have a good feel for the offensive line and um, just everything that comes along with them. And I guess send us out with your final words, if you have any. Um, if not, you know, send us out of here. Well, you know, I always got some final words, man. I mean, this is something that I live for. Uh, the offensive line are some, if not the most underrated guys on the field. And they don't get the publicity that, you know, the wide receivers, running backs get. You know, they don't get to celebrate on touchdowns and all that too awful much, for slant being the exception. Uh, so a big shout out to the, to the big boys up front holding the line and keeping Reed clean and creating holes for the running backs. Um uh, but really, just a little month over, just a little over a month away till game day. Um, so I think everybody needs to get ready and get excited because I honestly feel some very special is going to happen this season, and uh, I can't let this go. Uh, MTSU piss on you. Uh, thank you for letting Mason Williams get away from you. I'm, it, he's smart enough to not even to consider that school. Um, I like that. It's a bun it's a it's a trash heap down there. An absolute trash. You should be ashamed of yourself. Uh you need Jesus. But uh <laughs> <laughs> but, but with that, I'm gonna say uh hey hey Moff, who has it better than us? Hey man, Tyler, you know it's nobody. Nobody. Go tops. Go tops, man. We'll see y'all next time. See right y'all. On top or top.